How long have you had this ranch? Well, it's been our family since 1960. Okay. Yeah, my dad bought, come out here from western Oklahoma and moved out here, so yeah. Oklahoma is kind of like Texas, where you guys have a ton of private land. There's not as much public land, right? Or is there a ton of public too? Well, there, yeah, yeah, we got some public land. Okay. But, uh, but any more, yeah, there's a lot of private, you know. And this is yeah. basically all private around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We at, all three miles over here. We we've got uh, the lake, and and you know they've got a little bit of private. Uh, you know, I mean public country there, you know. But sure. <clears throat> but most everything's around here is ranchers and. Thing, you know. Yeah. So talk to me about the eye, Dad. What is, what is it like? What is a, what is a hunt like? What can we expect? I tell you what, it's, it's different. Now, you know, they're very skittish. And I'll tell you another, you know, I mean, they're just, uh, like I said, they're unique. Uh, their beard and everything, it's just, it's just really neat that they're very skittish. And if one takes off, they're everyone going to take off. Okay. Do yeah. they tend to herd up, or is it? Are they? Oh, yeah, they're going to herd up. Okay. Yeah. They so, have really good vision. They got very good vision. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's tough with a herd animal too. Anytime you have that, because then you've got a bunch of eyes looking at you, as just opposed to you know two. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Everybody wants the big one, and then you've got all these smaller ones. You know. Yeah. I hear they're pretty bulletproof too. Yeah, you need to be careful where you shoot them. Okay. Yeah, you won't definitely be sure. What What can we expect? What's the terrain like? Well, we're going to have a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have quite a bit of timber we're going to be hunting in. Uh, we'll be hunting probably around some ponds and things like that. And, and some, we'll, we'll look in some gullies maybe and things like that, you know. So it's a spot and stock kind of deal? Yep. Will they, will they run all through that or are we looking to shoot from timber into fields or where do they go? Now, you're going to, uh, you, now for the all dads, they're going to be pretty much in the, in the timbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're going to, you're going to. Be up in there with them. Yeah. Okay. So you'll be in there, and like I said, you'll just have to kind of watch, and more than likely, the head, you know, the big rams are going to kind of take the lead, and then they're going to shoot out of there. So the the the, ram, the bigger rams are the ones that take the lead, then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like with whitetail, for us, it, it seems like, uh, you know, up in Michigan, we seem to see the does or the younger does even, go out and kind of prance around and right. then the older does and then the bucks might work their way mm -hmm. Yeah, so bucks the, are gonna stay out there and watch. And right, see, see <laughs> <each> so <laughs> the rams are kind of taking the lead. So, yeah. okay, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Are they considered like a nuisance? Do they cause damage? Well, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. An all dad can stand flat footed and just jump eight feet. Because I mean, they're, they're wild. Yeah. I mean, they're probably the wildest thing we've got in this part of the country. Yeah. They just go crazy. That's sure. super interesting. When we spoke to the Department of Natural Resources, you know, we said we're going all dad hunting. You know, what what could we expect? And they said that they don't want any feral animals out there mixing in amongst the other deer and out competing them and out competing sure. the native species and stuff. But like you said, they can stand flat footed and jump over fences. Right. So they very often get out, and then they, they you know, they're a hard one to keep trapped. Right. Um, and uh, they've kind of established themselves through Oklahoma. Uh, as an animal that's you know might not leave and you know they're hardier than deer in a lot of ways and they can survive a lot more and like their eyesight stronger they have a lot of advantages so they can do a lot better and with that we're having issues you know with them establishing themselves and out competing the natives so if that happens you know what do you do so getting rid of them like this is good but also they create a really cool opportunity for people that otherwise might not be able to go to Africa might not be able to have these great experiences right. they can come yep. here and, uh, and still get that opportunity. I can't wait to try it. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as the meat, I'm thinking pretty positive. I'm like the guy that brings the cooler and the, the filet knife down to the down to the boat dock, you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> thinking real positive, but yeah. I guess once yeah. we sight him in, and we've got your favorite caliber of gun, we're gonna be shooting weather bees today. So I think with a good weather bee and a 270 round, we'll be in good shape. Good shape. Yeah. All right, well, let's sight these in. about male or female or what we might run into as far as what you guys are comfortable with us taking or what we might see. Well, 
it's going to be hard to tell one from the other. That's what I was worried about. It's like, man, I don't want to offend anyone, and you know. And some in some areas you go and you shoot a doe and people lose their minds. So you know that's why I want to have that. Well, in. they're gonna they're having their babies right now. In fact, uh, we we saw uh, some this week. Okay. And like I said, the male, you know, you, you can't judge by the horns. I've had people say, well, you know, they got this horn, that thing. You can't tell by the horns and their beard too. So you the know. females got the beard and the horns. Right. They Ooh. all do. You know. Are they like different in color at all? Not really. Any? Not no. really. Now the pregnant females, uh, you know. They may be fat, you know, they have a belly out there and things like that, you know. And we may see something like that, you okay. know. But, you know, if you're looking for the male part to hang down, it's all about that far. And I get we it. We got scopes. We'll be able to zoom in. Yeah. Uh, you I don't have to have scopes in. You know? <laughs> Magnifying glass, whatever we got. <laughs> okay. no, anyway, you're not going to be telling, you yeah. know, like a bull. I got some bulls over there, yeah. and you know, and you, you can tell them a mile off, but yeah. you won't do that on these dogs. We can wait them out until they pee. If they lift their leg, then we know. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> All right. But, uh, but yeah. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Tracker Boats, fish the finest. And by these other fine sponsors. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, this is beautiful. It's crazy. So you're saying they're gonna come down like the tree lines? Yeah, you see where the tree lines come together there? Uh-huh. What they'll do, they'll take the shortest root there to be exposed out in the open. Oh, I gotcha. At the very least. Yeah, so they'll they'll just follow the tree line, hop that little gap and then keep following right. the tree line down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'll just they'll just follow the tree line down and like I said, it narrows down, then they'll just hop over. We go on down here in just a little bit. We'll uh, pass that opening there. We'll we'll see a water hole that they oh, okay. drink out of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go check it out. Yeah. I'm thinking we've got the wind in our face. Yeah. They're not going to come from there because we just yeah. traipse through yeah, there. They're not coming there. So if we can come down, <clears throat> and I see that gap you're talking about. Right. If we We're can come in, in there. If we can go into the end there. With the wind in our face, we'll have free range of that whole tree line there, and they shouldn't be able to smell us. Right. Then and we're gonna. Have, then they've got water out there. There'll be water oh, out there. Yeah. Okay. It's available out there for them to water. So, uh, excellent place for them to come into. If I was an odd dad, I'd go there. I would too. <laughs> All right. I'm just glad I'm not. <laughs> so, you've set up where you think you've got a good shot. I would. I think right in there at that tree. And then I'm hoping to watch this too. But I think that I think they'll come down that. I really do. You know, I think I've got another spot where I've seen them before. Okay. And I think we might move over there. There's a little more dead trees and things that they can hide in during the day. And, and uh, this time of day, I don't, I don't think we're doing any good here right now. Okay. Shot it, it dropped immediately. 
marked as green because I did not want to track him out dead after dark. But it's getting pretty dark. It hasn't moved in a bit. So I want to go in. I haven't seen it move. So I'm going to load up and be ready in case it does jump up. But I'd like to get to it before dark. So here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, I was totally getting this. Uh, I got him in the deck. Oh, got him. That's awesome. This is day two of the hunt for me. Jeff's already bagged out. He spent the whole night cleaning it because he's so meticulous. I can knock it out in an hour and a half, but that's besides the point. What we're gonna be doing is I am going to be pushing different sections of thick woods. They seem to like the thick woods. The other thing is they seem to be more comfortable in there. What I was noticing yesterday is if they were in the open and you were 500 yards away, they'd spook like you wouldn't believe. But in the woods, they felt a little bit safer or they couldn't quite make us out because of our camouflage that they give us a little bit more time to see them. That's how Jeff got his shot last night. That's how I'm hoping to get mine today. So we're just gonna be pushing section after section, creeping along quietly, listening, hopefully getting a spot of them. That reminded me of the movie Harry and the Hendersons. There's a Yeti in the movie, and at the end of it, they're wondering if there's like more of them or if he's the only one. And then you're looking at the scenery of like woods, and then all of a sudden, they all turn and start walking away, and you realize you were looking at 10 of them the whole time. And that is exactly how I feel right now. I was looking, I saw movement, took me a while to key in on what it was, finally saw one, and then all of a sudden, when it spooked because of us, whether it was our smell or sound, the other ones went with it. Now here's the interesting thing. Yesterday when Jeff shot his, I got to see that the other ones hauled it in one direction towards this little river area. And a lot of times they'll consistently do the same things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hustle now and try and cut them off and hopefully be there waiting for them when they do come.
my heart is just pounding. He didn't look big. These animals are not supposed to be here. They're considered feral. Um, no matter how smart, no matter how wild and crazy they are and how difficult they are to get, they are considered feral. They don't want to establish a population here because they could outcompete with the native deer. So taking a small one is just fine. But man, what a rush. Blood there, blood there. It's not bad. Look like it kind of rolled over and did a hop. They're known for like jumping straight up in the air when they're shot. Went back this way. There's water over here. Anytime there's water, a lot of times what you'll find is an animal that's shot will go to water to cool off because imagine you get shot, if it goes into their vitals, if it goes into their guts, they feel a sensation of what we would consider a fever, sick to their stomach, that sort of thing. A lot of times they will go to water because they either want water or they know that with the cool water, if they lay down, the blood can tend to clot and it'll help close up wounds to help heal them. So that's something they probably do when they're hurt normally as well. Path here, I've got footprints and this is the path of least resistance, goes right to the water. Yep, right here, right here. That is perfect, right? where I aimed, right in the water. Half the win is just not having to go too far for it. Wow, so cool. Oh, he picked thorn bushes. So not everything's perfect. Wow, that is awesome. Quick death, not a lot of suffering. Nice animal, already cooled off for me in the water. That's exactly what they do though, they go to the water, you know, it doesn't look like he had too much rhyme or reason on trying to cover up his wound and get it in the water. But they go to the water. It's where it's when they get hit, it's what they do. Awesome. Meat. 